Hello and welcome to Wake Up with Argon. I am Lauren Brown, Argon's Chief Creative Officer. And I'm Kali Brown, Argon's CEO and Founder. And today we're going to talk about the impact of artificial intelligence on the user and what does that mean? What is AI for the everyday person? So Kali's going to take it away with his uh, uh, new ideas and thoughts on the matter. So, you know, today we're going to cover what people's expectations are, mm -hmm. you know, where we are right now in the, in, the, in the AI space, because people are probably wondering, you know, they're hearing so much about AI, and frankly, what they know about AI is what they watch in the movies. That's the vast majority of, you know, the biggest chunk of their knowledge. Yeah. And then, of course, they there's see... The reality. Yeah, and then there's these advertisements they see on t TV where, you know, you ask an assistant, hey, assistant, um, you know, order something for me or something like that. Where's basic, simple commands. Well, the reality is, you know, I'm going to be generous by saying, you know, these are technically AIs, but they're not really AIs like you've kind of expected. You you want this back and forth, this interactive experience. The more accurate term would be assistant. They're they're truly an assistant with AI components to it. That's what I want to say. That's probably you're being generous. I'm being nice. Yes. Okay. As I'm long trying as, to as be long, nice. I'm just getting you to be honest too. Yes. Right. So. <laughs> the question for, for the average person is, okay, so that's what we're seeing today. What's really around the corner? What's, mm -hmm. what's coming next? And for that, the best way to answer that is to, is to talk about a little bit about what we did in Argon. Because when we were building Argon, we actually, one of the issues we faced very, very early on was the, to this day, most of the assistants you see are very cryptic when you ask them things. Turn the slide on. Cryptic as in they use cryptic language. Yeah, you to have control. To, them. You have to follow a certain kind of format with yeah, it. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, turn light off. You turn have to use light command on. language. Yeah, and it's and, and that becomes something that is 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 just it's just a basic commands. Mm -hmm. uh, but the AI that most people are waiting for is the one they can interact with. So when we were building Argon, one of the things we came across was um, people. The, the initial users were using these cryptic commands. And while Argon understood the cryptic commands, you know, we were trying to tell the people, look, stop using these cryptic commands and just use English. Mm -hmm. so, you know, tell it, just use plain English. Talk like you're talking to your cousin, your friend, so your- just like normal, natural normal, speech. Exactly, normal speech. And we did it that way because that's really how people communicate. Nobody really talks cryptic, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's just more, inc it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. But that's a habit that was kind of like established because the big names out there, their stuff that they had was kind of like very cryptic like that. We built Argon to, to, to understand you and how will it understand you if it doesn't interact with you and going back and forth. So a good simple example would be, if you watch the commercials, by the way, you notice again, there's just their commands. But a better example would Meaning, be... Meaning, when you, when you talk about the commercials, you're saying, essentially, when you watch them, it's just a, you tell it to do something, it does it. And then there's no further interaction. Exactly. Yeah. And that is a telling example of how, you know, it's truly an assistant with AI components to it. Mm -hmm. A better example would be you, somebody walk up to the AI and say, hey, I feel chilly. Mm -hmm. You're in a room, you feel chilly. And the AI comes back and says, would you like me to turn the heat down or turn turn the heat up in this case? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm hot, so, you know, can you turn the air conditioner on? That means that the AI understands the expression and it then and it's also in you know volunteering what it thinks you should do. That's what it, that's what you, you you were expecting. So when we build Argon, we build Argon with that sensibility. So so um, if I hear you correctly, you're talking about uh, this is kind of that moment where um, I think for all of us uh, people who are very much into the memes would, would remember that like expectations versus reality meme um, where the users have various expectations and you know you can insert all these different films and narratives here and then there's what's actually calling itself the reality calling itself AI and that's a few different things so that's the essentially the assistants that are more like a almost vending machine style, here's a command and here's here's the result it's gonna spit out. But then you're saying that Argon is designed in a way where people can actually interact and it's it's in some ways that in between where the expectation and the reality is because it's closer towards the ideal, the natural, the relationship-based AI, that interactive thing, right? Yes, yeah, okay. that, that's, and, and that's very important. So, because people, that's really how, you know, re, 
So AI is very social. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you're going to find over time is your AI is going to be like your best friend. It's going to, the AI is going to know you as good as your family members will know you. Mm -hmm. And so for the AI to know you like that, it has to obviously interact back and forth, back yeah. and forth. Over, you have to have conversation. That's correct. And so like Guardians of Argon, you know, it doesn't know much about you when you first get it out, you know, when you first install it and start using it. Yeah. But over time, as you tell it more and more and more and more, it gets to know you better. Mm -hmm. So that then leads to, so, but to go back, initially I said time frame. What are we looking at in terms of time frame? Well, we have that in Argon right now. And what we are saying is, you know, when we, when our technology, what we want to do is make sure we, we, we get other companies to embrace the technology and, and get on the AI space as fast as possible. And by the way, if you're a tiny little company, if, if, if you know, from a com company perspective, mm -hmm. we have got a space for you. It's this, this AI space is not about just the giants. Yeah, it's about the mom you know, and pop. If you're a small mom and pop operation. The entrepreneur. Yeah, reach out to us. Because the earlier you jump on the, band, the AI bandwagon, the better off you're going to be. Mm -hmm. But the consumer, from a consumer perspective, you're going to get a richer experience. You're going to get, you know, imagine you want some tires for your car. You don't know what size tire. In fact, do you know what size tire your car use right now? I doubt if you know. Most people won't, won't, probably won't know. Everyone except the motorheads. The motorheads, right? And I'm sorry, that's not a. I mean, that's <laughs> and you her, are not, not the me. every person. It's not me. It's yeah. She said motorheads, but yeah. I, I did affectionately said. Yeah. But um, the point is though that that um, most people don't know that information, right? You don't. Most people don't know necessarily. Remember when their car needs to take, be taken to the to get service for the oil change. Mm -hmm. You know, your AI needs to do that for you, and yeah. Argon has that kind of capability built in. So, if we're talking about the way that AI is going to affect the user, mm -hmm. what you're saying is really it's an integrated experience, meaning totally. integrated, integrated with your lifestyle, with your ways of communicating, as opposed to a stationary um, um, item or object that cannot go with you from place to place. Argon, that or AI is yes. on, Argon's, on Argon's level, which is a very small subset, um, are delivering an, an experience, and they're delivering a relationship. Right. And so for the consumer, you're not limited in the same right. ways. What, again, most, for most people they're talking about, most companies, they're building an assistant. And an assistant is very, it's not the same as a personal AI. I mean, I don't know how else to explain. It's just mm -hmm. not the same. You know, when you have a, a friend, your friend hangs out with you, they go with you, they go to the restaurant, they go to the movies. Yeah. They, do, they, they are with you wherever you are, right? Your AI has to be with you. It can't just be a little thing sitting here, you know, on, in, 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 in the in Plugged the into a wall and that's it. it plugged into a wall and, and that's it. Yeah. The, your range of interactions with your AI has to be across every single platform. Yeah, yeah. Whether you're in a car or you're walking, in fact, you go to jog. You know, your AI should be monitoring, um, hey, what's your pulse? How much exercise did you do today? Mm -hmm. What is your, you know, if you're taking medications, it should be tracking all of that and, and keep you healthy. That's the goal. It's supposed to make you super person, superman <laughs> or superwoman, whoever you are. Yeah. It's supposed to, you know. Yeah. So, but, <clears throat> so we built those things in Argon and, and those are going to be on the market very, very soon in terms of um, other companies are going to, you know, when they license our technology, the goal is to is to get you that thing, um, and of course, because it knows about you, it's going to give you relevant information. Not not. So it's it's like you got services in that you know if you need to buy something or, or connect to a retailer or you have a, a favorite brand or something like that, it's got that. But it's also the actual AI is a is a is a benefit because the AI itself is a relationship waiting to happen. Absolutely. And, and it's and it's a relationship where, like you talk about a best friend, it's for you. It's pro you living your best life. And it has all of these tools because of its capacity as an AI mm -hmm. to be able to help you to be the best version of yourself. Right. It, it is about enhancing your life. Yeah. And by the way, just let me just throw this in. It's not going to take over your life. Trust me when I tell you it, it's not happening. It's, it's, it sounds cool. It's Skynet. Yeah, it's not Skynet. Definitely not Skynet, but it, look, it's it's cool to, to take, hey, it's gonna take over the world and freak people out. But the truth is, it ain't happening, guys. Well, it's hype. It's not. I don't. I wouldn't even say it's cool. It's just it's hype. It's what people it, do to hype right. up the topic. Exactly. And, exactly. And, and they, they hype it up. Yeah. All right. That brings us to our next segment, um, a little game that we like to call artificial irrelevance, 
In this segment, we bring up headlines of the day, and our guest, Kali Brown here, will determine whether or not these are relevant or irrelevant to artificial intelligence. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right, so the first headline is, Killer Robots Prompt South Korea University Boycott. Irrelevant. Honestly, it's just plain, that's just funny. Why, why is it irrelevant? Why aren't killer robots a thing? Because it, it, the whole thing is a spoof. The whole thing is like nuts. It's not serious, guys. Killer are, are we close to killer robots? Can no, we're so far away. It's miles out. First of all, there are going to be lots against creating robots that can do harm to people. That's so, so the concept of killer robots, somebody be in jail riding for that. So mm. that's not going to happen. All right, what about this? Um, artificial intelligence helps track down alien life. Is that relevant or irrelevant? Relevant. Why? Because... Um, Again, it's about you know gathering information and, and analyzing the information and then making decisions and then doing further analysis. So that's all along the AI corridor, so to speak. Okay. All right. So the future is artificial AI adoption in broadcast media. AI adoption in broadcast media. Mm-hmm. Potentially relevant. They're saying it's just the start of its adoption curve. And but there's they don't, some research going on. They don't really what the headline doesn't give us give me enough information to say but it's relevant or so not. You, so, you, so you'd say I would say it's kind of relevant because I suspect that they're talking about doing analysis on the information again. So we have our first draw. Yeah. We have our first draw. Ooh. Yeah, we have our first draw. The first draw in artificial irrelevance. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, facial recognition technology that works in the dark. Relevant. Why is it relevant? Because anything that you, artificial intelligence is about understanding information, understanding data, and being able to use that data. So imagine, you know, you have an AI that understand that can distinguish you from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that in the dark, the, the better. So, so here's the thing though. What about, what about um, people who will be freaking out because they're going, this AI can recognize me in a club. I don't want people to see me clubbing. Well, there's always the side effect of technology and that's one of those mm -hmm. but still it's AI that's just making the point that the AI is smart enough to know you're in a club when you told your parents I was not there <laughs> the next article um, it's from Wired and it's written by Tom Simonite some startups use fake data to train AI and a quote from the article says it's really hard being a startup in AI we can't afford to pay for that much data and that's from the chief technical officer of some company um, named Max Schneider. Relevant or irrelevant? Relevant. We faced the same issue years ago when we needed to get lots of data. And we, I remember one time we went out and bought like company database and we bought this, you know, like a couple of million mm -hmm. records. And it was, it, it was, guys, my empathy. I know exactly what you're talking about. So, so do you think, um, the article here is, is kind of presenting it as uh, a negative, or, or not so much a negative, but it's saying, the, like, here we go, fake it till you make it as long, has long been a motto of startups trying to survive in market stock by larger companies. It's led to some companies like something, and then it brings up um, a major corporation that's had a lot of uh, um, controversy. It was headed by a woman. Um, in Silicon Valley. That's a whole different story. Um, that's, that's deception. There's a, there's a big difference between, I know the company you're talking about, yes. and I know the issue with it very yeah. well. Look, that's deception, where you deliberately go out of your way to falsify information, yeah. to project a certain image. Yeah. There's a, it's a, it's a far cry from um, you generating sample data to, for example, to practice. Yeah. For example, if you had, let's say, let's say you 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 had you're gonna create an AI now and you wanted like ten sentences. You can sit down and come up with ten sentences on your own. That's you generating the sen ten sentences, and then you train the AI in those ten sentences. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need a lot, lot, lot more than ten sentences. Mm -hmm. But the point is, that's a lot different from somebody falsifying information. So there's the, a difference between there's a difference between um, I guess creating sample data and then just saying that you have data that you don't have. Sample data is sample data. Mm -hmm. You know, saying that your machine can do X when it only can do Y is, you know, especially when you, you when that's primary part of, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so, so you'd say that this was artificially relevant. 
um, and that the, you, you come basically with a, a, an empathetic ear to uh, the smaller startups that have to kind of work what they can um, as they're building. Right, and, and also the problem, one of the problems they face is information is much more expensive today. When we started out, you know, you could buy a certain bit of information mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, it was a lot less. Mm -hmm. Today, the price has gone up and um, and so, yeah, it's a, the, yeah. they have, they've got a bigger, a bigger load to carry today than, than we did back then. Yeah, I mean, I think that also reflects, again, why for larger companies that need to be off on the ground running, they, they need to work with, with or they're best partnering with an Argon because we've we've moved so far ahead in in, in uh, the development stages that there's a lot more that can be done while so many people are still having to go through what is the hard work of building AI. Yeah. And then we and we look at that with a with an with an eye of sympathy, I think, as well, just for knowing how hard it is. Right. Um, all right. So the last article we have here. Um, China to use facial recognition cameras that find jaywalkers by text. Is that relevant or irrelevant? The technology is relevant. The use is kind of, I'm gonna say irrelevant, but the technology is relevant. Yeah. Again, it's facial recognition, and facial recognition is a component of AI, mm -hmm. because if you want your AI to be able to recognize people. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, folks, but that's a bad use of technology. You know what I can- find somebody jaywalking. By the way, if that happened in the United States, Everybody would be fine. Because but maybe that's why they want it, because they say, hey, we can get some good tax dollars. It was like tolls on bridges. Now it's just tolls on crosswalks. Please don't give these people any ideas. No, I take it back. It's not going to happen. Bad idea. I take it back. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and and I, I think that's, that's all we got today for Artificial Irrelevance. Thank you so much for participating. And um, thank you all for participating in Wake Up with Argon. And um, if you have any articles and things you think should be brought up in our next uh, Artificial Irrelevance segment, why don't you put them in the comments below and tell us what you thought about the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. Use a thumbs up if you like this video and give us your feedback. And to download Argon, go to www.argon.com. Thank you so much and see you in our next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Subscribe to this channel where weekly we'll explore what it means to connect to your world through artificial intelligence. And to be part of the Argon journey, follow us on social media.